Welcome to the Java beginning tutorial set. Today we're going to look at static variables. And I got to tell you, my first encounter with these was not good. This took me a while to understand how these things work uh, because no book really explained it that well. Now, I know I'm digressing a bit here. One of the things I've done in my own experience is to develop a relationship with several developers and kind of query them on how things work. And it's really surprising uh, when I was going through the Java book, I would take that book to some of these developers and they would look at me with a very quizzical look and go, no, 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 that's, that's not how it's done. Here's how it's really done. And you kind of pick up uh, from the developers how things are really done in the real world. And so a lot of the information and useful tips they've given me, I'm sharing in these videos with you. So sorry about the digressing, but okay, so let's Let's get on to static variables. So we have this nice keyword here, static, for our variable here. So this becomes a static variable. And we come down here and we've got a static method. Now static variables are just that. They're static. They never go away. Think of them as like a cliff against the raging sea. They don't go away. It's always there no matter what. It's like a rock. Object or instance variables, as we know, do go away with the lifetime of the object. So think of objects, I like to think of them as on demand. We need some work to get done, the object is created, and then we get to use this variable, and then when the object's done, all this goes away. Static variables, never. They stay around, well, they don't stay around forever, probably for the lifetime of your program, but for a long time. So static variables are there for a very, very long time. Now, it's useful to talk about the JVM here for a little bit, the Java Virtual Machine. That's loaded right now, in fact, as we speak. Now, we do not need to get into the specifics of the Java Virtual Machine. It's only necessary to talk about that in the broadest sense because it'll help explain how static works. Because you really don't have to know how the JVM works behind the scenes. It does all the memory allocation for you. And that's a good thing. Now, it used to be in languages like C++ and C, you had to do a lot of memory management. Management. In Java, that's not necessary. But it is necessary for a little discussion about it here because it will assist us in understanding how this static keyword works. So what happens when we save and compile our class, when I go over here and hit save, the class gets compiled and again it goes into the Java Virtual Machine. Inside that Java Virtual Machine is something called the class loader. He's the guy that takes this, gets a hold of it, and allocates it for use whenever we call upon it. But he also does something else. He will come down here and start scanning for the keyword static, and he'll look for them. And when he finds it, he finds a match, he will load this static variable into the runtime memory. So that static variable is good to go. Now again, I'm using runtime memory in the broadest sense here, guys. I mean, we could get into the heap and we could get into the stack and all that stuff, but that is for tutorials much later on. For now, I'll just use that term runtime very loosely. So again, he gets loaded into the runtime, he's ready to go. Same thing, by the way, with the static. He's going to see this and say, oh, I've got to load this out there. He is a permanent fixture, and since there's no copies of this, we're not going to make any instances of this. This is not an object or instance. We can go ahead and load that out into the runtime memory. Same thing again with the static variable. We'll never make any copies of this. He gets to live forever. And how lucky is that? These guys, they only have a very short-term existence, but the static variables, they get to survive on and on and on. Now, you don't believe me? Okay, let's go over here to the main. And for our purposes, let's actually copy this and we'll paste it back. I want to show you guys this. So copy and then let's get rid of this. Now, if we type in the name of this class registration over here, Look, you notice we get the static variable username and our static method because those two are loaded out in the runtime. We could technically start using these right now. And by the way, that's the same thing with our main that we've always been using. This is loaded out there too. That's exactly what this does. He's out there ready to go as well. Now the reason we use the class name here is because we haven't created an object. 
And even if we did create an object, we can't use an object to reference a static variable. It's not even part of the object. So that's why you always use the class name to refer to the static variables. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. And we will copy and paste our code back in. And apparently I copied the public static void main. We don't need that anymore. And let's go ahead and do a save here just so this is all nice and neat and tidy. And we got rid of the IntelliSense. Okay, so, uh, and let's get, I, just to be a little cleaner, let's get rid of some of these extra lines. Okay, now let's go back to registration and let's talk about our class that we're gonna be creating objects from. So this registration class is gonna handle new users that come into our website, our hypothetical website. And so when they come in here, our constructor will go ahead and assign the username that they enter to this variable and then our nice little method down here, put username into the database, we'll do that. Obviously, this is hypothetical too. We're gonna to return the username here, and then let's just assume we have some hypothetical code here that puts that username into our database. And then at that point, the object's done its work. So pretty simple. And as you can see, I typed all of this out because I don't want to bore you guys typing this all out and I'm not a very good typer in the first place. Now, let's go ahead and run this. And let's just arrange this nice and neat. Now, I want you to clear this out of your memory. Just forget that we even see this and forget even that this is typed in, okay? Let's act like all that's here is this public static void main. You're in the matrix right now and you can do whatever you want. You're slowing things down quite a bit. Now let's make some more assumptions here. Let's assume that when somebody comes into our website and they submit the form that has the username, we have some additional code that will actually begin to generate the code to kick off this object and it'll create the new keyword and then kick off our constructor to get registration to do what it needs to do. So our website goes live and five days later, we get our first user named Mary. Mary comes into the website, fills out all of her information, hits that submit button, and then on the back end, our registration takes that and is gonna go ahead and plug that into our database. So let's take a look at this. We had our object created here. Everything starts with this new keyword. It invokes our constructor registration and takes Mary's username, which just happens to be Mary. It comes over here and it tells the class loader, hey class loader, um, I need a copy of registration to do some work. So please do that for me. Go ahead and load that out into the runtime memory. And by the way, I'm gonna do some work here too. I'm gonna to go ahead and take that value of Mary and assign it to this string variable. And I'm also at the same time gonna go ahead and increment our static variable by one. Notice we started out zero, now that becomes one. And now I am all done, everything's over. And so let's go back to our main program. And after the constructor is done, we're gonna go ahead and invoke our put username into the database. So we're gonna go ahead back here. The username of Mary gets returned to this method and that method goes ahead and plugs it into our database. And this method has done its work, it's done. We come back to here and this confirms that it's been done. Mary's username has been created and entered into the database. The object's life now is done as we know it and goes through a process called garbage collection by Java. That is, he tosses it out like a piece of trash. Isn't that a great name, garbage collection? Get it out of here, right? We don't want any more game over for that object. And that's it. Now the main goes back to its little normal life here and is just sitting here in the runtime waiting for something else to happen. Well, Mary goes out to lunch with Larry and tells Larry about this great website that she just joined. And Larry comes back to the office and one hour later, he logs in and creates his username named Larry. The event handlers and all of our listeners and all that stuff, all that other code we got to kick off our new object. There we go. We've got our new keyword, which invokes our constructor. It takes the username Larry entered, which was Larry. We go back here and it takes the new value for this username and it is a new value. So this variable is a new variable as well, right? And he gets that username Larry assigned to him and the constructor says increment the static variable. Now the static variable, he's been out there all this time, right? He hasn't changed. His value doesn't reset. This one does. He keeps taking new usernames, but this one, it just stays the same. And so, it's gonna go up to two now. 
because we got another tick. Tick, tick, right? It's up to two now. So we go back to the main and our put username database method gets invoked. You know what it does by this time? Down here, Larry is now into the database. The object is over with, he's done his job and he goes through garbage collection. Good night, Irene, for him. And so some more time passes and our main's just sitting out here along with our static variable and our static method. And the next day, Mike, my boss walks in and goes, you know, we've been monitoring our network with all our websites and we've noticed that the website that you did the back end job for that's getting some traffic I need you to run a report and tell me uh, how many people are registering and I say no problem and I go ahead from my internal website and run a report and eventually through all these classes and all this other stuff it invokes my get username static method and so we go back here and the static method is going to go hey return me the value of this static variable name username and you know what actually it would have been more appropriate to call this username count remember in a previous tutorial i actually said we should name these for what they're doing and i i usually like to do that so let's call that count and now we're going to get all kinds of intellisense so let's go ahead and fix all this count and let's call this count because that's really not a username, so that was a little bit misleading, of course, as we know. Let's go ahead and run this again and just get our same, we'll get the same output, of course, but I just wanted to be clean. And so Mike told me I need to get the users, and so I invoked our get username count method over here, which is a static method. He is gonna go out and say, hey, return me the value of this static variable, which is now at two. And that, of course, is what gets returned here. And I go tell Mike the good news that we got two people and Mike is very happy at that point. Now, two years later, apparently we had a bad marketing plan because everything went south and we haven't had a user in two years. So this poor little main and these poor little static variables are just sitting out here waiting, doing nothing, right? Well, somebody finally logs in. Our new and revised marketing plan has worked. And you guys get the idea, right? We get a new object and this thing gets invoked. He's gonna go and tell the class loader, I need a new object of this so I can do some work and blah, 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 right? Okay, you get the idea. And then, um, yeah, we gotta run the report again. And this time it shows we've got three people. I think you guys are getting the idea how this works. Now, before we go, I wanna talk about one thing that's kind of important to mention. Static and static go together like peas in a pod. Now, it's interesting, I was actually watching, um, yesterday I was actually watching some uh, YouTubes on this, and I think I watched five tutorials on static variables. Only one of them actually mentioned that you should have static methods going after static variables. And he, all he said was, uh, you know, you just need to do that, and that's it, didn't say anything else. Well, here's the reason. Now we can apply this to what I wanna say about static methods and static variables going together like peas in a pod. Now, let's say I totally lost all sense of my wisdom here and decided, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's try to return this object variable up here. Well, let's see what happens even if we do it. Let's, let's see, because it's gonna probably tell me to get lost as it should, by the way. Java's probably thinking, is this guy out of his mind? Nope, can't do that. Non-static variable username A cannot be referenced from a static context. Wow, what does that mean? That do, you know, that doesn't tell us a lot, right? Well, basically what's going on here is if we go back to our timeline and the new user one that we created to put Mary in the database is no longer there. It's gone. It's gone from the world forever. So now I'm gonna go ahead and try to kick off a static method to call something that isn't even there anymore. Now in this world, you can't reference something that's no longer there in reality. I can't go back and have this. It's gone. It never will exist again. Now, maybe if you had some supernatural abilities, you might be able to do that, but I don't have those abilities yet, so sorry. You lose, this is over with, and you can't have it again. Now, there was a moment in time when these two coexisted, right? The new user one object coexisted with the static variable. They were alive at the same time, but now that is no longer the case. And that's why it's great to have your static method go after your static variable, because guess what? They will both always be there. It's almost like a guarantee. It's like, I can guarantee that that static variable will be there for my static method. 
I cannot guarantee that an object variable will be there. And so that's the best way to think of that. Okay, so to wrap this up, just keep in mind that this is only one way to use the static variable in terms of how we were using this counter. But this is always a good way to explore the concept of a static variable. And as you saw, it's a good way to keep track of how many objects get created from our registration class. And one final time, when the new keyword is used, the registration constructor gets invoked and it goes over here and requests a copy from the class loader to be made or to be put into memory and then he does whatever he needs to do. Okay, that's gonna wrap it up for this tutorial. Talk to you guys later.